Even though Kelly Rowe believed in God, he didn't really want much to do with him. He was a man on a mission. He was going to pursue his dreams and vision for what he had for life. And nobody, including God, was going to get in the way. Well, in the pursuit of those dreams, things didn't go exactly as he'd planned. And they turned into a nightmare. Kelly, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thanks, Greg. I'm glad to be here. Good to, good to have you here. Um, so you were a guy that had some understanding of God, but not the Bible and Jesus and that. Yeah, when I grew up, my mom had a, a loose understanding that there was a God. It was mostly through nature. She liked to go to the mountains and say, well, God's here and that. So there was no Bible reading or upbringing in the church or anything. I, I would say our place of worship was a sports field. Sundays, we were either a hockey rink, a ball, dying, hockey in the gymnasium. And the, I was a real sports nut. I was every weekend, pretty much every a tournament of some sort. So you eventually wanted to work at TSA. Uh, and again, that was... Perhaps that where you were putting all your energy into your career mm -hmm. and living the good life. Yeah, I came to the university and got into the integration program. I created, but in that pursuit of that job, I could see, I, you know, there was something, you know, seeing in my life. Seeing, and I, I tried to invent myself with this invent broadcasting career. Really, what I really needed to do was uh, just take a look more at the spiritual aspect. And there was a time in there where I actually thought maybe my problem in life, why I'm so stuck. And, is I don't know God, you know, and that's kind of some of the beginnings of my exploration of maybe who is God. <laughs> so you had some understanding then there was evil, a devil, there was good, there was a God, but it was a little bit fuzzy. Yes, yeah, I, I, I had some experiences with the dark stuff, you know, I'd, I'd seen some demonic things in the spirit and different things, so I knew there was a devil. And I had this understanding there was a God, but I had no idea I could have a relationship with God. So that was kind of where I was lost. And I think finally in this, you know, washing machine lifestyle of just party every weekend, play sports, come out, you know, exhausted, go to work Monday, kind of lost in that, not really even wanting to be there. But Wednesday would come and the weekend would come. I, I could see there's something missing. I'm stuck. I'm actually becoming, you know, a darker person. Maybe the problem is I don't know God, but how do I even get to know him? I didn't even know where to begin. Was that something you were thinking about often, or was it just sort of pop up every so often and just living out life and pursuing what you thought maybe would bring you some happiness and some fulfillment? I think it was uh, a lot of the times it was Sunday nights. You know, whether I had a girlfriend at the time or not, there were a lot of Sunday nights where I was just totally wrung out from the parties and the sports and the living life so hard on the weekend. And I just think, how long can I even keep doing this? What's the point? You know, what's the point of this life? You know, why was I born? Is there a reason for me to be here? You know, those deeper thoughts, and it was often just in my own mind as I was just laying there kind of exhausted on a Sunday night before Monday was gonna be in my face again. So you eventually end up in Kamloops, mm -hmm. BC, as a sports broadcaster. Yes. I mean, here you are, okay, I'm, I'm building a career. Uh, you know, maybe TSN or something is down the road that's going to ultimately bring that fulfillment. Yes, it was a one stop before I was in Lloyd Minster. And I'd started uh, reading Buddhism, New Age. I was reading about spiritual practice. But the one part that was missing was the truth. Like, I really felt like everything I, re I was reading hid the devil. And what happened one time I was... Hid brought, the devil? It hid the devil. Like, it, okay. didn't, it didn't acknowledge there was this evil. It was either something you know that you were had to grow through or overcome in your own mind you know in your in your subconscious there's an evil side that you had to defeat within yourself is the new age theories i was reading okay and buddhism was this overturning of practice to get through to nirvana so that but i'm like well no there's a devil like he's not in my mind he's out there just like god's out there but how do i defeat this or how do i get away from this devil I don't know how, and this isn't helping me. I could see it. So there was a time I asked God for the truth. And I started to pray or say, you know, God, I need the truth. I don't want to just know something about you. I want the truth about you. There's got to be an ultimate truth. And after that, it wasn't shortly after that, I was driving from Lloyd Minster where I was working to Red Deer, my home. And I don't even know where I was back there, but God spoke to me in my heart and said, son, you want to find me? You need to read the Bible and go to church. Wow. And that was the moment when I got to Kamloops, I bought my first Bible. 
I said no to I said no to the church, but I said I could read another book. <laughs> okay, so church is not quite in the equation. No, yet, not yet. But you're pursuing, and you now you believe that God has told you to, to read the Bible. So what did you find there? Well, I I really found you know it took me some time to get the Bible. I was putting it off, putting it off. The one thing that my mom did say she did, she had me christened in a United Church, Sunnybrook United, as a baby. So she said, I did this for you when I was looking at this pursuit. She said, so there was something that, you know, I took you to this church. When I moved to Kamloops, I was actually walking past the United Church every day to work out at the YMCA downtown. And that was where God would say, I thought you were going to buy a Bible or he'd put it in my mind that you haven't done anything yet. Maybe you should come to church. So he was keeping the conviction But I found that, you know, again, the excuse was I'm in a new job. I'm in a new city. I'm too busy. But finally, eventually, I, I decided to make that step and go get a Bible. And once I started reading that Bible, I could see, you know, I, I started, someone told me, start the New Testament. And when I was reading about Jesus, I could see, okay, this is maybe something here. I didn't know much about Jesus and that he was the Son of God. And the real thing that really started to confound my mind was the fact they told his story four times. I'm like, what kind of book is this? <laughs> Like yeah. who, who, he died and he's back again. He dies. He's back. How many times are you going to tell the same story? So, but I knew something was going on. But the first real connection to the Bible I made was in, uh, was in the book of Romans. And it was a profound breakthrough that I realized then I was a sinner. I didn't, I couldn't look and say, well, that guy's a sinner. I'm better than him. I'm, I'm okay. He's a mess. I, I, it was like the mirror. Paul put the mirror in front of my face and just said, this is who you are. This is, you're stuck here. And I could ultimately see, I'm sitting there looking at Mount Peter and Mount Paul as I'm reading my Bible on this hill. And I could see this scrawny little lying devil standing on the one mountain. And I could see Almighty God, almost like a Moses experience, consuming a mountain. Wow. And I thought, wow, and I've been following this my whole life. I cannot believe it. I actually, actually said, I hadn't read Proverbs yet, but I said, what a fool am I almost really. Like, how could this have happened? 40 years I've been stuck, and I've got this all-consuming mighty God, and, and I had some understanding that Jesus loved me now, and that God didn't hold me account. You know, the mess was over if I would come to Him. Wow. Uh, I just want to pause just for a sec now. You, when you talk about you realized you were a sinner, Now, yes. a lot of people that are watching this program and they're not following Jesus, right. uh, well, I don't want to be judged or well, that. That's actually a good thing. When we come totally. to realize, because that then opens up the way that we need this one called Jesus who died on the cross for us. Totally. Like I could see I was a slave to the devil. I could see I'd run a path over to him. Anytime I had a choice to make, I'm running down that path and he's telling me what to, he's saying. Oh, here's another drink. Oh, what about this girl? What about this, you know, win? Wasn't that so exciting? Isn't this what life's about? Just winning tournaments and conquering women and drinking and living life like in this largeness, right? That you're going to be famous one day. And I could see I was just all a lie. I could totally see it. And it was the Bible that revealed that to me. I, I didn't, I, it was so profound. I, I didn't even want to go back. I was reading at a break in my work day. And I didn't even want to go back to work. I wanted to just run home and tell my living girlfriend at the time that I, I, the Bible was going to save my life. And when did you make that decision, Kelly, that, okay, I've read it. I've read the four stories about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've read the book of Romans. I understand that I'm a sinner. When did you make the decision that, okay, I want to have this relationship with God? Well, at that point, I didn't have much guidance. It was basically the unctions of the Spirit and the Word, and I didn't have anybody around me. I didn't know really how to do this, right? Like, I knew that I needed to start pursuing God. That's what I said. This trip over here has got to end, and this one's over here has got to start. You know, in Romans 12, breaking the patterns of the world, I realized that's, this is what I'm in. I'm, I'm, I got to stop this pattern, but how? It's, I've burned a hard trail in there. This isn't comfortable. This isn't easy. And I, I, I wrestled with the fact that I still had to face God with this pile, this mountain of a life of sin and just rebellion and pride and, and you know, just living like a heathen, really, like just like a, a real sinner. I, I could see how many relationships I've ruined, you know, how many times I've kind of scorned people and used them. And, and I, I didn't know how to do this. And that's, 
I started asking around about church then because I realized from reading the Gospels, you know, Jesus said a few times you need to, you know, go to church. Paul says in the Bible you got to don't forsake the assembly. Yeah. And I realized, you know, I got to find some sort of community. So it was a while before I went to church and never said the sinner's prayer, but I really believed that I got saved that day. Yeah, I came into relationship life. with Jesus. Yes, I just felt like that day I knew I had a new plan that I was going to execute through the Bible. But it wasn't until I was in church and understanding that I could give my life to Christ. Mm. You know, I didn't understand that piece. So that was in 2008. Um, you came home, told your living girlfriend that you're going to be a Bible thumper. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I guess as the years have gone by, you've come to understand, you know, grace and some of those things along the way. Mm -hmm. And now, Kelly, uh, you know, I guess after that 40 years wilderness experience, and you're now working with Hope Mission, which is reaching people that are going through difficulty like you were. Totally. Uh, you know, it was about a year in. I'd read the Bible. I got a whole lap of the Bible in. You know, I'd given my life to Christ in the church. But I'd moved to Edmonton because I unplugged from the sports broadcasting. I, I could see the pride in it. And I'm working at the Edmonton Oil Kings office as a media rep. But something's changing inside where I can see it's not even sports broadcasting I'm supposed to be doing. What do I do for you, Lord? Like, I don't understand why I'm on the earth. I don't know what my purpose is yet, but I know it says in the Bible, you have a plan for me, a good and perfect plan. So I, I remember one day clearly sitting in the washroom where I'd just go to say my prayers just to get through another day of kind of slugging it out in the world. And I, I just read out Isaiah 6 and said, here I am. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm surrounded by people of unclean lips. You know, but you can clean me up and send me out. So show me where to go. And it was three months after that prayer, I was, uh, I was working at Hope Mission. Wow, and I know that it's not, it's not an easy work. No. Uh, you see a lot of victories, uh, people that, that come through addiction into relationship with Jesus. You, of course, have also attended many more funerals than you would like, but you're still going and, uh, you, and your story is encouraging. So thank you, Kelly, for sharing that. And, and I know there's people watching today, maybe you're one of those people that said, you know, I believe in God, but I don't know if I need a relationship with him. Well, all of us at some point that are following Jesus had to make a decision to follow him. And, and like Kelly, maybe you're wandering around, okay, I got a Bible or I don't really know where to go. We have people that are standing by on our prayer line that will talk to you. They're not going to judge you in any way. They will explain uh, what the gospel is. When we talk about the good news of Jesus, that's what it means to follow him. Give us a call, 1-866-273-4444. And again, today would be a great day to begin a relationship with the God of the universe. You know, we're adding new and powerful stories every day. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and stay up to date with our latest content.